Well, next, we are now under two months from the London Marathon, where once again over 40,000 runners will raise millions of pounds for a variety of good causes. Most of them will have a personal story attached, including Laura Sides, who will be running for Dementia Revolution, set up by the Alzheimer's Society and Alzheimer's Research UK, based in Cambridge. Well, Laura was at university when she noticed her father behaving erratically after a diagnosis of Alzheimer's. She left her studies to care for him. Well, Laura's now found out that she will very likely go on to develop the condition herself within the next 10 years. She's just 36. Well, I'm so pleased to say that Laura joins us now. Hello, Laura. It's quite a story you have to tell, isn't it? Um, and I know that part of the reason why you're, you're speaking to the media is that you want people to understand more about Alzheimer's. So if you wouldn't mind sort of going back and, and, and speaking about when you first noticed that your dad wasn't quite himself. Yes, yeah, so I was away at university at the time and my dad um, was calling quite a lot and just didn't sound quite right on the phone. I couldn't really put my finger on it, but... He just was just seemed a bit out of sorts. Yeah. Um, I then returned to Norwich for my 21st birthday and arranged to meet him on, on the day outside a department store and he just didn't turn up, which was, was just really unlike, unlike him. Yeah. Um, I then went round to his apartment and knocked on the door and he opened the door and he didn't say happy birthday, he didn't register it was my birthday. Um, the apartment was all a bit off. Uh -huh. um, so I, I realised that something was, was really quite wrong. Yeah. And, and you took the bold step again of actually leaving university to care for him, didn't you? I did. I, it was a bit of a snap decision, if I'm honest. Yeah. Um, it turned out that somebody was popping into, a carer was popping in just to check that he was maintaining daily, you know, being able to, to wash and do some shopping and put washing on. And he was really struggling having mm. somebody in his space. And I just thought, well, I could do that. So I, I quit uni and came back and, and jumped straight into to, to caring for him, um, which was a weird but wonderful time. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you mentioned you had some sort of moving moments with him. You went on daily adventures together, just deciding what he wanted to do that day. Yeah, we did. I mean, I was in a position, lucky, I guess, that I didn't have um, big life commitments. I didn't have a family. I didn't have a career. I was in a position where I could spend a lot of time with him. Um, so we did really just wake up and I'd ask him what he wanted to do and, and we'd do that. I think mm. I knew and I think he knew that days were quite numbered of how we were living. So we just tried to make the best of it. And it was at an appointment for him that you, you went with, with him to, to this appointment and you found out it was a genetic condition that you will then have a 50-50 chance of getting. And you decided for a while not to find out if you had that faulty gene. Yes, it was at an appointment at Addenbrooke's Hospital um, that I became very aware that this was a genetic condition. Um, at the time, I don't think I had the headspace to process that. Mm. Um, and for a number of years um, preceding that, I was quite happy not to know. Um, it then got to a point where it started playing on my mind and I was thinking about it more and more and I decided that it was time to, to find out. And. So what does the, having found out, what does the future hold for you? Do, do you know what the future holds for you precisely? Um, or, or? I've been, I can only go by what I've been told by, by specialists, that the pattern is, is quite strict. Um, they think I will start to decline at a similar age that my dad did, which was in his mid-40s. Uh -huh. um, he did cover that up and maintain a, a almost normal life for a few years. But he that was makes, a doctor, wasn't he? He was a doctor, yeah. yeah. But that makes me quite sad. That, um, mm. I, one of the reasons I want to raise awareness and, and make a change is because I, I would like to live my future differently, um, not having to hide what would be what will happen yeah. to me. and Just be yeah. open and allow yeah. people to learn from it and scientifically yeah, learn from it as well. Yeah. You're very keen to sort of allow people to explore what's happening in you to help others. Yeah, I've been involved in a medical trial for about four years now, um, testing a drug. So... Um, yeah, we really hope that there will be a big medical breakthrough soon, fingers mm. crossed. Um, but I realise that I'm in quite a unique position with this gene that I can hopefully help to, to make a difference. Well, you're involved in the London Marathon as well. Um, how's that going and, and how important is that for you as well? It's really, really important. Um, it's, it's a way of, of raising a lot of awareness, a way of raising a lot of money. But for me personally, it's also... Um, something to keep me on track and, and give me purpose. It certainly looks if it's going well. Looking at these pictures here. Good. I know, you look incredibly fit. My goodness. How often do you have to train? Um, I run four or five days a week, um, including a long run, threshold training, um, recovery runs. Um, 
I can't say I overly enjoy it. <laughs> but the feeling afterwards... You don't want to be pushing those weights around the, the London Marathon, I can assure no. you. That's it. <laughs> the runner's high is a thing, yeah. and that does, um, it does help. Yeah. yeah, well, I wish you the best of luck. And, uh, yeah, let us know how it goes. Thank you, Will do. Thank you so much Thanks. for coming in.